Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. In this session of economics, we shall discuss census. So what do you mean by census? Census means it is a systematic record of different enumerations. Enumerations means counting of persons or things. It is called census. So census may be for different things. It may be for people or it may be for, suppose I want to count chairs in a room. So that is also a census of the chairs. Suppose I want to count population. So that is called census of population. So census may be done for anything. So if I count any number, it is called census. So moving on, the terms related to census. So what is the first term? It is birth rate or it is also called as crude birth rate. It is the number of live births per thousand population in a year. Suppose the number of births taking up are 25 per thousand population. So 25 by 1000 is, is the crude birth rate. And next term is crude death rate or death rate. So it is the number of deaths per 1000 population in a year. That is called crude death rate. Moving on to the next term that is demographic transition. So what do you mean by demographic transition? The shift of birth and death rates from high to low levels. That means earlier the birth rate was high. Now it has shifted to a lower level and death rate was also high. Now it has shifted to a lower level. So during this transition period, there will be a rapid population growth that is called demographic transition. The mortality will be very less. Number of people dying it will be less. Hence it is called as demographic transition. So moving on to the next term that is demographic dividend. So what do you mean by demographic dividend? It is called as the accelerated economic growth. Shifted from decline in fertility. What do you mean by decline in fertility? That means number of births are slowly declining. Okay. So this will be very useful for a country. So whatever the population which is already there, that will be useful for the actual production of national income in the country. That means whatever population which we have now, now births are not there, but when the population is continuing, the suppose I want a population of 35 years age group, below 35 years of age group. So whatever population below 35 years of age group will be useful for the production of different gross domestic products of the country. Okay, so moving on to the next type of term that is called emigration. What do you mean by emigration? Emigration means it is a process of going out to another country. It is called emigration. That means the number of people who are moving out from one country to another country. We move from home country to another country. There may be many reasons. Some may be moving for a job purpose. Some may be moving for their relatives. Some may be moving for their residence. All these things will cause for emigration. So moving on to the next term that is immigration. What do you mean by immigration? It is a process of moving from another country to our one country. That is called immigration. Suppose any foreigners are coming from another country to our country to reside in our country. So this is called immigration. So these two terms are opposite to each other. One is immigration going out and immigration is coming in. Moving on to the next term, that is infant mortality rate. So what do you mean by infant mortality rate? An infant is a person who is up to the age group of 1. So mortality means dying. So number of deaths of children under the age of 1 per 1000 live births. Suppose 1000 people are taking birth. Suppose 20 people are dying. So 20 by 1000 is the infant mortality rate. Okay, it should be less. It denotes the development of the country if IMR is less. Moving on to the next term that is maternal mortality rate, MMR. So what do you mean by MMR? So it is the number of women who are dying during the pregnancies. Okay, and childbirth complications per 1 lakh live births. That means per 1 lakh live births of children, how many women are dying during the delivery stage? Suppose 20 people are dying, 20 by 1 lakh will be the MMR. Okay, so moving on to the next term that is 
population density what do you mean by population density population density means it is a number of people living per square kilometers okay suppose 100 people are living per one square kilometer so population density is 100 there okay higher the population density higher the crowd of people there clearly understood so moving on to the next one that is sex ratio so generally sex ratio means it is a number of males per females but here we are referring to female sex ratio so generally females are less in india so we consider number of females per thousand males this is called sex ratio this is adult sex ratio so moving on to the next type of sex ratio that is child sex ratio between the age group of six, 0 to 6 years so the number of girls per thousand boys is the child sex ratio between the age group of 0 to 6 years okay moving on to the last term in the the terms of census that is literacy rate so what do you mean by literacy rate it is a number of people above seven years of age who can read write and learn any language in india okay so those persons are called literate so when we calculate the percentage it is called literacy rate okay above seven years he can read write and any language not only official languages we have 22 official languages okay but we have so many dialects so many tribal languages so he can read and write any language and also he can learn any language above seven years so such person is called as literate person in india so moving on to the story or history of census so what do you mean by history when was history of census started when census has been started in india so we shall see all of all those things about that so the first census which was conducted in india was in 1872 during the viceroy of lord mayo okay he was a viceroy of india in 1872 when the first census of india was conducted when the first decennial census what do you mean by decennial census it is for 10 years so it was conducted in the year 1881 okay it was under the viceroy of lord ripon okay so this is the first decennial census so from 1881 onwards till 2011 the last census of ours till date so every year for every 10 years census is conducted 1881 1891 like that 2011 census was the 15th census in india we shall study about 2011 census so the first census commissioner during the first decennial census was w w plowden okay and moving on to some more story about census that is indian census act was passed in the year 1948 and census comes under concurrent list not under union list or state list and it is under the ministry of home affairs home ministry okay so clear about the story about the census moving on to the 2011 census so it is important for our gs examinations so we shall discuss in detail about 2011 census okay so 2011 census. we shall not discuss everything about 2011 census but very important things which are very relevant to our examination okay so moving on to the 2011 census so it was conducted for 28 states the 29th state is telangana it was conducted before it was formed before after the 2011 census in on june 2nd 2014 so telangana was not included it is part of andhra pradesh state at that time so it was conducted for 28 states and seven union territories and the census commissioner was c chandra mauli okay he is a registrar general and census commissioner of 2011 census and the slogan of 2011 census is our census our future and it is the 15th census since 1881 i have told you already 1881 the first decennial census has been started in india so from 1881 onwards 1891 1901 like that 2011 is 15th census and it is 7th after independence that means our after 15th august 1947 1951 61 like that 7th after independence and second in 21st century 
first is 2001 and second is 2011 so clear about 2011 census facts moving on to 2011 census more about 2011 census so the total population of india as per 2011 census is 1.21 billion okay and out of which 51.54 are males and 48.46 are females almost 52 percentage and 48 percentage are the ratio between males and females and what is the world population in 2011 it was 7 billion and what is the share of india in it it is 17.5 percentage out of the world's population moving on to the top most 10 most populated countries in the world as in 2011 so china occupies the first place in 2011 so it has around 1.34 billion in 2011 and india occupies second position and us occupies third position only 312 millions and fourth is indonesia and fifth is brazil for us up to five are very important so first is china next is india then us then indonesia then brazil okay so moving on to the 2011 data which it has given for us so first coming to area wise so india has an area of 32 lakhs 87240 square kilometers and india occupies seventh position in terms of area first is russia okay next is canada like that india occupies seventh position in terms of area and moving on to the highest and lowest in terms of states and UTs so highest area occupying state is Rajasthan and the second highest state in terms of area is Madhya Pradesh in terms of UTs highest is Andaman Nicobar Islands and second highest is Delhi and lowest in terms of states is Goa okay second lowest is Sikkim and uh, in terms of UTs this lowest UT is Lakshadweep and second lowest is Damandiyu these are very important for examination so you have to remember so there is no alternative we have to remember somehow okay at least first highest first lowest so first highest is Rajasthan in terms of area and second highest is Goa earlier it was Madhya Pradesh Okay, but Chhattisgarh was carved out in 2000, so it has become second lowest area, second highest area. Okay, and now first highest area is Rajasthan and lowest area is Goa. Moving on to the next type of scenario, that is population wise scenario. Now we will compare the states according to population. So India's population in 2011 is 1.21 billion and in 2001 it is a 1.03 billion coming to highest and lowest so uttar pradesh occupies highest position in terms of population and maharashtra occupies second highest position in terms of population and delhi and puducherry are first and second highest in terms of union territories and in terms of lowest pop population of the states it is sikkim and mizoram Sikkim has the lowest population and second lowest is Mizoram and in terms of UTs it is Lakshadweep and Damandiyu. First lowest is Lakshadweep and second lowest is Damandiyu. Moving on to the population density wise scenario we have already seen what is population density. So population density means it is the number of persons living per square kilometers. So in 2011 we have 382 people living per square kilometers and in 2001 it is 324 as the population has increased area will be almost constant only so as population has increased density will also increase so it is 324 in 2001 and 2011 it is 382 so moving on to the highest and lowest so Bihar and West Bengal occupy the first and second position in terms of states for highest and Delhi and Chandigarh occupies first and second highest in UTs and in terms of lowest 
అరుణాచల్ ప్రదేశ్ అండ్ మిజోరాం అరుణాచల్ ప్రదేశ్ హ్యాస్ లోయెస్ట్ పాపులేషన్ డెన్సిటీ అండ్ సెకండ్ లోయెస్ట్ ఈస్ మిజోరాం అండ్ ఇన్ టర్మ్స్ ఆఫ్ బ్యూటీస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అండమాన్ నికోబార్ ఐలండ్స్ అండ్ దాద్రా నగర్ హవేలీ ఓకే so moving on to the next one that is sex ratio so i've already told you sex ratio means number of females per 1000 males okay in 2011 it was 943 females per 1000 males and in 2001 it was 933 that means a tenfold increase is a good sign okay though it is very narrow but it is a very good sign increasing number of females per thousand males okay moving on to the highest and lowest so obviously kerala occupies highest position in terms of sex ratio how many females are there it is more than thousand that means more females are there than males 1084 females per thousand males and second highest is tamil nadu with 996 and in terms of ut Puducherry has highest with 1037 and Lakshadweep has 946 and lowest sex ratio is for Haryana 879 that's why Beti Bachao Beti Padao program was introduced in Haryana only first and second lowest is Jammu and Kashmir with 889 females per thousand males and next in terms of UDs it is Damandiyu and Dadranagar Haveli. okay moving on to the child sex ratio so child sex ratio it is a number of girls per 1000 boys between 0 to 6 years okay so in 2011 it was 919 and in 2001 it was 927 that means there is a decrease it's not a good sign okay so people are preferring more males than females this is not a good sign for any world or any country okay so coming to highest and lowest kerala again has highest child sex ratio and second highest is tamil nadu and in terms of udc it is puducherry and lakshadweep and in terms of lowest sex ratio of child children haryana and jammu and kashmir occupy the first lowest and second lowest states and in terms of udc it is damandiyu and dadranagar haveli okay moving on to the literacy rate i have already told you what do you mean by literacy rate it is a number of people who are above seven years who can read write and learn any language not only official languages he is called as literate in india okay so moving on to the literacy rate in 2011 it is 74.04 percentage 2001 it is 64.8 percentage the male literacy is 82.14 percentage are literate in india and female are 65.46 only this is not a good sign in india okay 2001 it is total literacy was 64.8 percentage okay so moving on to the highest and lowest literacy rates in india so obviously kerala leads the literacy rate with 94 percentage it means for every 100 people 94 people are literate in india okay and second highest is 91.3 percentage with mizoram so first kerala is the highest literate state and then mizoram moving to union territories this lakshadweep and damandiyu occupies first and second places and coming to lowest literacy rate is for bihar with 61.8 percentage and second lowest is arunachal pradesh with 65.4 percentage next for ut is vadranagar haveli and poducherry occupy the first and second lowest places okay moving on to the next category that is rural and urban distribution okay still india's population are dependent on agriculture more than 50 percentage of the people are dependent on agriculture slowly globalization has started but people are still in agriculture only though it is contributing 17 percentage to gdp people are still in agriculture okay so moving on to rural urban population so in 2011 the rural population is 68.8 percentage and urban is 31.16 what was the case in 2001 so it was for rural areas 
it is 72.18 and for urban areas is 27.82 so there is drastic increase in the urban population in 2011 so slowly people are migrating to cities and rural population are decreasing okay we're moving on to the highest rural urban ratio so highest rural urban ratio is for uttar pradesh and second is bihar bihar has the highest rural urban distribution and next for union territories it is maharashtra and uttar pradesh and lowest is for sikkim and mizoram and lowest for UDs is sikkim and arunachal pradesh okay so this is all for this session in the census topic and most people are asking me that what to read suppose if there is census coming up in 2018 or 2017 no need to mug up those things those are not official data okay so for us decennial census is the official data 2011 next census will be conducted in 2021 okay most of the examinations which which are government examinations they will ask questions only from 2011 census okay hope you have learned enough things about census we'll meet in the next sessions thank you